Okay. I will do this session now on Messian's toolkit. Um, hi, this is Randall Davidson. We're going to talk about Messian's toolkit today. And he is um, one of the most important composers, I think, of the 20th century. Um, I had an opportunity while I was in college to work with him. Uh, he was a, a remarkable person for me uh, to work with. He spoke very little English. I spoke very little French, and so I had an organ student sitting with me on his piano on the uh, organ bench, and we talked about composition. And I was very, very fortunate to have a chance to work with him. Um, so um, let's see, we've got some people here. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to get somebody in here. I'll stop sharing. Participate. Hey, Jay. I figured out the problem. Boy, this is uh, one kerfuffle after another. Do I have any hair left or has it all been burned off? Uh, hi, how are you? I'm going to get started here. Um, I was started when uh, you, you rang the doorbell. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Messiaen. Uh, I had a chance to work with him um, when I was at college. He was in the United States in 1984, in the spring of 84, and he came to the country. He didn't speak much French, and I was lucky. I didn't speak much, I didn't speak much French. He didn't speak much English, and I had a French student um, and organist who was at the school, he sat on the organ bench with Messiam, and we talked about, um, about composition and specifically about his musical language. Um, this is an incredible book. I don't know if you've ever seen this. This is the, the language, his musical language. These are all musical examples that he, um, that he used and that he created for this um, book uh, that he used. He taught, among other people, Pierre Boulez, almost all of the best composers, and he taught at the French, uh, at the Paris Conservatory, and he was an incredible um, teacher and aesthetician. Um, this is gonna be about the modes of limited transposition. Um, for this workshop, I need you to get some staff paper and pencil or notation software, although I'm gonna be doing some workshop stuff with you. Um, and I'd like you to download from the Google Drive the MLT worksheet which is, um, I think, going to be helpful uh, in our presentation. Oops, there we go. I spelled keyboard the way the French people spend it, spell it, um, with two E's. And, uh, and we're gonna be, I'm going to be using the keyboard here, but if you have a keyboard there, that would be helpful for you. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Olivia. Hold on, can you go back to what we're supposed to download? Where is it? Oh, yeah, right there. The uh, MLT. Worksheet. It's in my uh, shared folder, my, my uh, shareable handouts, I think I called it. And it's in the, uh, the shared folder that we had with all- MLT of... scores? Yes, I think. Okay. Yeah. And that's just the work. It's a worksheet for us to work with. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Olivier Messiaen. He wrote, he was a POD, POW, uh, very devout uh, Catholic. Now, let me go get that person. Uh, there we are. He was a very devout Catholic um, and was in jail because of his faith. Um, I don't know if people realize or recognize that um, part of what his uh, transgression was, according to the Nazis, is that he was. Catholic, but he also was a sympathizer with the underground, uh, French underground and resistance. So uh, during the war, he was put in the concentration camp. And this is a picture of him in that camp. That's him with the glasses standing looking at us. And there was a quartet of musicians in the camp with him, as it turned out. They were allowed to play music. Um, the cellist, uh, died in the camp. The clarinetist uh, died in the camp. No, the, the clarinetist l lived just beyond the camp when the camp was, was uh, liberated. And the violinist also died in the camp. 
Um, he, Messiaen, played piano. He's a wonderful pianist. And um, this is his picture in the concentration camp. This is the piece, uh, Praise of the Eternity of Jesus Christ, was the name of this, of his, uh, <laughs> I'm writing, there we go. There we are. This is the piece. It's called Louange à la Trinité de Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, the, the in praise of the eternity of Jesus. I can't hear anything. You can't hear anything because I didn't share the sound. There we go. Let's go back just a little bit. It's quiet. Can you hear it, Kevin? All right. Thank you for letting me know. What's, what's important to remember about this piece, this is a, one of the seven movements in the Quartet for the End of Time. Seven. Seven movements. This is one movement in the seven. He wrote this, he wrote this piece with his musical language that he invented, specifically the modes of limited transposition. Can you hear me okay? Okay. And he wrote it for the people who were in the camp who played music. He played piano. And the there was a clarinetist and a violinist and a cellist. They said the violinist and the cellist passed away during their internment in that camp. The clarinetist lived. Um, they were there for different reasons. He was there because he was part of the resistance or was sympathetic to the resistance. And the Nazis um, had every intention of all of them dying sooner or later. They were liberated in 1945, I believe. A trumpet player over here. Many of the people in the camp were gay, uh, and they were interned because they were gay. Some were uh, from Central Europe, some were political uh, prisoners, some were um, because they were prisoners of war. It was his intention to express, intentionally express eternity in this piece of music. It wasn't still, his sense of eternity was not paralyzed and just the same notes. It changed slowly. And it has an incredible arc, melody does. It goes on for many, many measures before there's a phrase that you can feel like there, there's a breath in the melody. That again? It's sort of like it's like holding breath. Yeah, it does feel that way. Like almost it's just inhaling. He's inhaling and inhaling and inhaling. Now exhaling. Oh, wait, wait. Now it's 
exhaling. This is Yo-Yo Ma's performance. This is about not quite halfway through the piece. And I don't want to take the whole time listening to this, but I wanted you to get a sense of the phrase and how sort of consonant and dissonant. It's a combination of consonant and dissonant sounds in the chords. And the chords don't change very often because it's expressing eternity. It's sort of in the middle of the piano, right? And the cello part is fairly high above the piano accompaniment, which is basically playing the same four hertz three, seven, twelve times, however many times. We're going to create a little piece using these modes, and we're going to do an accompaniment that's similar to what we've just listened to. Let me stop it now. Um, Messiaen was a composer. He was an ornithologist. Does, do you know what that means, that word? Study birds, right? He, he studied birds. He would wear a little tiny little beret. He would go out into the into the fields because where he lived was in Paris, and he would he had a little place outside of Paris. He would go out in in what was farmland basically, and notate. Uh, he had perfect pitch, so he would notate the b bird calls, and he would make pieces out of those bird calls. Here's a short biography about about him. It's in Wikipedia, but it's a fairly good review, a very good um, uh, biography. This Messian picture here is 1986. I worked with him in 1979. It, no, it was the spring of 80 that I got to know him. So shortly after I saw him, he passed away. You actually met him? Yeah, I worked with him. He gave lessons to the number of composers that were at my school, and I was the only composer at my school. So when they brought him in, it was a festival of his music, and um, they said, and he's available for master classes. Which students would you have? And I raised my hand and said, I'm a, I'm a student. And he said, well, come on in. And he didn't speak much French, but the organist- uh, I mean, he didn't speak much English. Not much English. I didn't speak much French. He didn't speak much English. And uh, we talked sort of in, you know, back and forth a little bit in uh, Franglish or uh, Franglish. Um, but we, um, we did communicate and Jim Moon, who was the organist, would sort of translate for us. Um, and you can check this out, this biography on, um, on Wikipedia. It's a very good biography. He was inspired by Bryce Canyon when he came to the United States that time. He went to this, this canyon and ended up writing a piece about Bryce Canyon using a sort of ecstatic music. He wrote a piece about St. Francis of Assisi. Um, and, he was very, and his wife was Yvonne Loriot. Uh, they came and both came together and they played forehand piano pieces that he had written. He's a very interesting composer. And here's a piece of music um, which uses the modes of limited transposition and it's a catalog it's like the art of Is fugue. it a problem solver? It's like the, the, it's like the uh, Art of Fugue by Bach. It wasn't meant to be a concert piece. It was meant to be um, uh, literally a catalog of bird calls that he had notated from all of his, his, uh, his experiences. Oops, let's go back here. And it looks like this. It's uh, published by a composer named, and there is his wife, Yvonne Loriot, and this is the first book 
of the, it's a bird of the mountain. That's, that's the bird. And he was inspired by that. could play it. I could play the left hand. She could play the right hand. It's not an alto class. No, it's not an alto class. We'd have to transpose it. <laughs> it's hard. Has this become part of standard repertoire? No. It is, it's like the art of fugue. It's like the art of fugue in that it's, uh, it's sort of a curiosity and people will occasionally perform it, but it doesn't really, it's not to be a, co a catalog, and so it's not meant just to be a concert piece. He used a lot of the stuff that he wrote in the catalog, almost as sketch material, that he used later in pieces, among them the Bryce Canyon. Yeah. But I mean, we all know what happened with Valero. <laughs> yes, we do know. Unfortunately, that a lot of things happened with Valero. But that, that gives you an idea of Sort of the less pretty stuff that he wrote, it was bird calls that inspired him and he was notating. Now this is the uh, typical, uh, whoops, there we go. Hello. I wanna make this bigger. These are the church modes. And if you'll now down, if you see uh, that at, as I asked, if you'll go look at your modes of limited transposition uh, scales, I'm going to get out of here um, and then go over to that document and I'll show it to you, Kevin. It's in the, um, um, in the shared documents file under my files, handouts. I printed it, I'm gonna go grab it. Go, go ahead. These are the limited, modes of limited transposition. And I'll tell you, talk a little bit about how they're created. Um, first of all, there are, as you can see, eight, uh, I think there's nine modes, eight modes all the, way, all the way through. And this scale, this one right here, you'll see the twos between each of the intervals right here. That's how many half steps are between each of the, each of the uh, notes. So there's a whole, it's, it's a whole step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. And then you can transpose it to this. That's up a half step. And guess what happens the next time, the next half step up? It's exactly the same thing as the first. The same notes. And it looks like uh, if you're looking at your keyboard, it's starting on C, it's at C, D, E. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then C. It's all whole steps. And then it goes up a half step and it goes to the black keys and then the white keys. And then you go up a half a step more and you return back to your first first transposition. Of, so, and so, go ahead. Oh, so did he ever write um, like any pieces that were just um, like these whole tone scales? Yes, yes, in fact, you, I, I don't, I can't play them, but I can play uh, something that sounds like them. Oh. So it's very sort of ethereal, impressionistic sounding when you only use those notes. And one of the tricks of using the first mode, which is this one that I played just now, there's two transpositions. So I call it 1.1 and 1.2. 1 
the uh, the interesting thing is if you mix the modes, it, there's you lose all of the quality of those that chord. So you basically stick in a mode and don't transpose it and stay in that mode. And then it, suddenly you want to change modes. It sounds like you're going into a whole new key. And I was just playing those two modes for you. Is that, what is that? I don't even know what that is. That's not us. Um, mode two, you'll see the half steps. You'll, you'll see the half steps that are written. It goes back and forth. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, just now looking at that, I would like to say, let's, let's pick every other note and see if it makes a chord. You want to try that? C, E flat, F sharp, A. Oh, a diminished seven. That's exactly right. And what's interesting about that is I can change from the E flat that's played here, I can play E natural. That's in the mode. Right. Now there are three transpositions in this mode before it starts repeating itself. And then it's, you can't, you, you, it's impossible to, tr to transpose it more than three times without making it exactly the same. Mode three, could you play that, Kevin, these notes from mode three? It's not quite a chromatic scale, is it? Is it sound major to you or minor? I don't know. It sounds chromatic -y. It sounds very suggestive, like sort of. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Now let's do a sixth. Can you play just the scale using the first, the root of the scale and the sixth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play C and G and then play those notes in the mode. One step up, keep going through those parallels. So they're not always perfect fits. No, listen to this. It goes back between tri tritones and open fits. If I do the, if I play the C, E, and A flat, and I just play the scale. Uh -huh. It goes back and forth between, in our ears, between major and minor. Um, so I'd like to try a little exercise here. You see this screen that I have here? Does that show up? It says Koi exercise using MLT. It's the same. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. So, no. I, so I have to change the uh, what I'm sharing here. Hold on a second. We're going to create a little piece. That's what I'm saying. There we go. Oops. I need to go back and share the sound. There it does. Great. All right. This is the third mode. Oh, second mode. Second mode, going into the first transposition, followed by the second mode in the second transposition, and the third mode, the second mode in the third transposition. Let's listen to that for just a second. Oops. <laughs> I can't hear. Here. See if I can do a better sound. You can't hear it at all, or you can't hear it very loud. At all. I can't hear it at all. You can't hear it at all. Whoops. Get that out of here. That's not good. For some reason, when I have Finale open, yeah, and I try to do like a Zoom meeting, yeah, I can't hear anything, and I can't like um, talk. <laughs> you can't talk and be heard. Yeah, and you could you could talk. You just can't be heard, and so you can't you can't hear any of this. And Mandy has solved this for for one of our lessons, and I'm trying to remember what you did. Do you hear it at all? 
All right, here's what it sounds like. You hear that? Now I'm gonna repeat it. It, so it does sound when it's, I'm just playing the scales. It sounds like it's going into a new key. Listen to it. That's just the uh, second mode, first, second, and third transpositions of the same mode. It feels like it's going into a new key. All of the notes in that scale are uh, the same. The same. Can you see the, the modes of limited transposition worksheet that I asked you? It's, in, it's also in finale. Can you see it here on the screen? No. I would like you to, if you can, Man Mandy's got it. Can you get yeah. it, Kevin? Can you get it uh, from your computer at all? Yeah. Okay. It's right here. Oh, fantastic. Then we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's go. And now I'm going to harmonize this, these scales. So I want you to play, uh, look at the notes in the second mode, first transposition. And here's the tune. That's the, the scale. Now I want us to come up with triads or four note scales or three note scales. So triads or uh, four note scales, <laughs> four note card, chords. I was going to say chords or scales. Chords, chords, chords. So let's, what's the good, what's a good one? And let's, uh, I'm going to put it down here. And then you go into the second transposition at the second note of that next uh, next chord, next bar. Notate that. Um, are you are you doing one chord for the whole scale, or are you changing the chords? Uh, I'm changing the chords. Okay, so let's let's talk about a good chord, and I'm just using the treble clef. Should I make it a bass clef as well? This one right here. I can make this bass clef. So we have a left hand and a right hand. There we go. This will be your left hand. Up, 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 up. There we go. So let's see. Uh, Mandy, do you want to take a shot at what the first triad or four note scale, uh, four note chord is going to be? Three or four note scale chord? Um, what, would, what should you it start out being? And it could be anything. Really, my point of this exercise is that a lot of chords work really well because um, yesterday we were talking about it in belching tones. Today, there's almost all of these notes become embellishing tones or passing tone or whatever, the, whatever you're trying to do. Um, let's just come up with a chord for that first measure. Um, Mandy, why don't you give this a note? Any note? C. C. And I'm going to give it a, a whole note right down here. Boom, 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 boom. And um, Kevin, pick another note from the, um, from the mode. E flat. E flat. Uh, let's put it up here. Uh, I'll get a flat. All right. And pick a next, another note, Mandy, from the first transposition of the second mode. Uh, G. G? Uh, I think we'll put it right there, don't you think? Now, could you play this, Kevin? Just that chord, and uh, with, and I'll play the me the melody or the the right hand. Go ahead, you play it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Then now what's the next, what's the next measure going to be? Let's just pick out whole notes. Any choice? Uh, Kevin, you get to get, your, get to go first. Um, In that second transposition, e. second transposition. Okay, good. I'm going to put it down here. Mandy, you get to get, get the next note. Second transposition of that. Um, G. G. Just keep it. Oh, good. I like common notes from chord to chord, from measure to measure. <laughs> Kevin, your turn. What else? Uh, D sharp. D sharp as in dog? Yeah. That is not one of the notes in the second transposition of the. Right there. I see C sharp, D, E, F, G, G sharp. No, on the. D sharp, second to the last note. Oh, I thought you said D as in dog sharp. Sorry. I will do that C sharp up here. Wow. All no, right. you said D sharp. Yeah, it's right there. On the second transposition. Second of, to the last. Note of measure two. Oh, you're looking over here. I'm looking at the worksheet. That's what I'm, I made a mistake on the melody then. It should be E, D, not D sharp. Oh. This is a D sharp over here. Yeah. Yeah. Then can I do a D flat yes or a c sharp which uh, should what's the best way to spell it when we have a b and a g what's the best way to spell that chord because it could be in harmonic spellings should it be a, a d flat or a c sharp most of them are a sharp so i think a c sharp okay all right so there you go right there all right then next measure um, I'm seeing the third transposition of mode two. Uh, oh, Kevin, why don't you pick another note for the second measure? Let's make it a four note, a four note, chord, four note chord. Um, F. F. Now, where should we put the F? Up here? Or, oh, it's an F natural. Or down here? Or in the middle? Uh, at the very bottom. Very bottom, down here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting sound because you've got two tritones, the F to the B and the G to the C sharp. I'm going to put it up an octave just so we have this un unusual thing where we have two tritones, but we have a second, a whole, se a major second between the, the notes. I like having it crunched like that. Now that's voicing is a little bit different, but let's try this next one. Third mode. Now we have to do two chords, but they're the same mode. Does that make sense? It's the second mode, third transposition. We're going to have two chords in a row. And I want to have some common notes from chord from, from the second measure to the third measure. What are they? Uh, Mandy, Mandy gets to go first. B. B, the low one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Okay, Kevin. I'm boring. Going for the common tones. Uh, D. D, and which one? Up here? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and that means a C sharp is like a leading tone going to, this, going to the D. What is the other, what's another tone we could use? Uh, Mandy, your turn. It uh, looks like we have an F. An F again. And again, tritone. Maybe we, ch what if we change the uh, octave of this? So it's the, it's the same note, it's just a different octave. Higher or lower, Mandy? Lower. Okay, interesting. And Kevin, you get to add one more note to this four note chord. Um, can we do a G sharp? Exactly, great. Now what's so cool, we're going to be able to play this in a second. Now, I want to do exactly the same mode, but I want a different chord. Now, when we, I'm just reminding you that when we play in the key of D major or in the mode of Dorian, 
Dorian is all white keys on D, right? Um, we can oftentimes play an A minor in Dorian mode. We can play D as a D minor chord. But what's, what are some of the other unusual chords that are not a major or minor in Dorian? We have F major, which is in Dorian. Um, we could play F and B. We could do this diminished triad in Dorian, B, D, F. So let's try a different chord, not the same notes, but different in the same mode, but a different, but different chord. What could that be? And who, who had the last note? Who did the G sharp? Kevin. You did. Okay, so uh, Mandy, Kevin, and then Mandy. Pick a note. Um, let's see. D. In that core, in that last. Okay, D. Now, which which D are we going to do? Based on the movement of the bass or and the soprano. Would do you want to have the same D up here? Down an octave. Down an octave. Okay, so we're. It's move. There's movement in the internal voicing. Mm -hmm. There's moving. Um, Kevin. Um, e flat. E flat. Now, should we do that? The one down here at the very bottom of the of the there. So it's a stepwise movement, which is really always good. Yeah, always good. Moving it's, down. Yep. Yes. Exactly. That, that's good. And now I need, uh, I want to pay attention to the soprano part or the highest part, Mandy. What is the chord that we could use? We've had E flat, then D flat. You know, we talked about this, Kevin. You said you liked the sharps, but if you look at the measure to measure thing, I think going from E flat to C sharp could be done better. I'm thinking this should be a D, a D flat. You see what I mean? And then when I'm looking at the score, I'm going, oh, E flat, D flat. Ooh, and then the next one has to be, um, I need to do D natural. See how that works. And then the D natural down here is also D natural. That's good. Okay, can we? Yes, your turn. Okay, uh, so let's go back up to an E flat. Uh, above the staff? Yeah. E flat. Okay. E flat above the staff. Seven. Hold on. Yeah. Great. Uh, e flat. That's interesting. So we have an E flat in the bass and the E flat in the highest part. Mm -hmm. It's duplicating. Okay. So it would sound like this. Now, Kevin, I need another note. Something that's going to be related to the previous measure. There's a G sharp or a B in the oh. what? A, a? with uh, an A natural. Yeah. All right. All right. So here's oh, that's cool. Here's how it sounds. Uh, tell me if you can hear it. Can you hear that? All right. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Very cool. And we sort of used standard voice leading, sort of. And we're using, we're bending the rules all kinds of which ways, but we are using sort of the line and how the voices move I'm just doing the high voice and the low voice on the chords. Now, that's, that is parallel movement, right? So I'd like to think about that. That's nice. That's contrary movement. And then that's, in, that's parallel movement. I mean, contrary movement. So it's the second chord I'd like to look at. I'm looking at the top note and the bottom note to make sure that we're gonna get contrary mo motion as much as possible. Which, which note should we change, the D flat or the B natural? 
Hmm. Here we go. And then we're going to the second transposition. Aha! Uh -huh. We could do a E natural. I'm going to do E natural here and see if that doesn't sound. Try that. Kevin, could you play just the top note and the bottom note of the chord? I think that sounds pretty darn good. Now play, whole, play all the chords while I play along in the scales. Go ahead. It's a little close. Yep. Play. E flat, A natural, D natural, E flat. Repeat it. Repeat it. Now, you can see I've done met the third mode first transposition for two measures in 10, 8, and I group the notes in 4, 3, and 3, eighth notes. And then what did I do in the, on the next measure on the rhythm? How did I group them? 3, 3, and 4, right? Which is a retrograde of the rhythm from the first measure. We had 4, 3, 3, then I went 3, 3, 4. And I didn't do, I didn't mess with the melody at all. Let's look at the next exercise right here. I did the third mode, second transposition. And Kevin, could you play that melody, please? Just those two measures. Go ahead, do the second measure. And then do the next measure, the third mode, third transposition. Uh. <laughs> and then the last measure. G sharp, that's a G sharp too. Right, now what, some of the things I did there, just to keep ourselves on the, the, uh, the beam of what Messiaen is about, is he was using, uh, I was using a re retrograde rhythm, which is something that's an impossible, you can't, if you, if you do retrograde rhythms, they're backwards and forwards, they're the same thing. That's another charm of what Messiaen was doing with rhythm, not just the harmony. I'd like you, if you have time, and if you're interested, to do a harmonization of those, that melody that goes on for a few measures. And then I'd like you to invent your own because I think you're gonna find that having a new sound or so tonal resource available to you that is not major, that is not minor, that is not a, mo a church mode, but a completely different altered mode, you're gonna have some really interesting harmonies that you're gonna be able to choose from and you're going to be depending much more on not your not the traditional i know i know the one chord i know the four chord i know the five chord but you're going to have to invent what the next chord is using some of the voice leading rules that you already know or you already prefer you like the contrary mo motion in the top and the bottom voices you like 
the voice leading that uh, some common tones from chords to chord. And you absolutely can use what I started dr dropping in is 16th notes just to sort of indicate the beginning of each of those barred rhythms. Like that. And it becomes, it becomes a, almost bird-like in trying to get those rhythms. And that's along the lines of Messian's as well. So this is a little homage exercise to Olivia Messian. And I think it was fun to try something new and to bend your ears in new different ways. And I think Kevin and Mandy, you can both start using this. It's, there's a lot, of, a lot of approach, I'm sorry, AJ, but if you can start blending your already existing knowledge about theory, voice leading, harmony, and start using these different resources in, and get a different sound all together and expand your palettes of sounds. So this is great. I think we're terrific. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Kevin. Do you have any other, any other questions or improvements or comments or, what's the last one? I forgot the last one. There's four of them. Comments, suggestions, improvements. Uh, we'll just say complaints. <laughs> did, you like, did you like what you heard? You liked it okay? What about you? AJ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. great, great. Have you ever done any of those modes before? No. This is a, this is, this, these two books that I'm holding up here, this one costs $65. This one cost $150 to give you some idea. There's a, the publisher's name is Le Duc. Uh, is that read right? to you, do you, is that backwards or is that forwards? No, it's the right way. It's the right way, okay. Le Duc is the pu publisher. You can order them in from France, but not in the United States, not available. So this is a little bit of touch of France that I, I just wanted to bring into the camp to let you guys know. And it's really great resource. Messian's music is amazingly exotic. Some of it frenetic. But the amazing part about it was he was an organist and he improvised every Sunday afternoon at his ch Paris church. Wow. And it had an incredible stone church with an incredible pipe organ. And he was able to make that organ and he used modes of limited transposition. He used bird, bird calls. He used retrograde rhythms. He used all of these, uh, these techniques that he talks about in, the, in his book. That's what his musical language was. <laughs> and he, he was just an amazing, amazing person to get to know. All right, I will see you guys at three at the salon. All right, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.